guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to use angle measures to help us find arc measures of circles. Now to start with, there are a few things that we'll need to define. So let's say we've got our circle, and we've got the center point, let's call that point A, and then let's say we've got a couple of radii going out to the edges, and that creates an angle within our circle. Since that point A is the center of the circle, in the middle of the circle, then we're going to call that angle that's created a central angle. Now let's also label these endpoints of our radii. Let's call this point up here point B, and let's call this point C. What this angle does is it actually splits our circle into two parts. There's this small part that runs from B to C, and then there's this bigger part which runs from B the long way around to C. Let's put another point out here, let's call this point D. So we would say that this piece runs from B to D to C. Now these portions of circles, or pieces of circles, are called arcs. Now there are three kinds of arcs that we could have. The first kind of arc is a minor arc. And that's an arc with a measure that is less than 180 degrees. Our second kind of arc that we could have is a major arc, and that's going to be an arc that has a measure that's greater than 180 degrees. And then our third kind of arc is a semicircle, and its measure is exactly 180 degrees. Now if we go back to our picture from earlier and identify some different kinds of arc, this arc that goes from B to C is going to be a minor arc. And the way I know that is because it's less than half the circle. Half of a circle is 180 degrees, since a full circle is 360. This is smaller than half the circle, so it's a minor arc. As we're naming minor arcs, we want to use the two endpoints in order to name that, so we would call this arc BC. And the way we show that something is an arc is by putting a little portion of a circle or a little arc over the top of it. Just like with lines, we name them by putting a line over the top of it. An arc, we name by putting an arc over the top. Now this bigger piece on the bottom left hand side is a major arc because it's more than half the circle. When we name a major arc, there's going to be three points that we use. We're going to use the two end points, but then we're going to have to have another point that tells us that we're going the long way around the circle instead of just the short way from B to C. So we would name this arc B, D, C because we're starting at point B, going through point D, and then hitting point C. And again, we're going to put an arc over the top of that to show that we're talking about an arc. Now with our minor arc, this BC, there's a relationship between the measure of the central angle and the measure of that minor arc. And the relationship is that they're exactly the same. So in our picture, if this angle in the middle was a 50 degree angle, then we would say that the measure of the arc that runs from B to C is a 50 degree arc. Because the measure of the minor arc is exactly the same as the measure of the central angle that creates that minor arc. Now if we wanted to find the measure of this major arc, well we know that a full circle is 360 degrees, and since this is a minor arc, it has to be a 50 degree arc like we mentioned earlier. So the major arc is just going to be whatever's left over. So in order to find the measure of this major arc that runs from B to D to C, we're going to take 360 degrees and subtract off the 50 that we used from that minor arc to B to C. So we end up with a 310 degree major arc B, D, C. In this example, we're given a picture to take a look at. PT is going to be a diameter of our circle since it goes through the center point R. What we want to do is we want to find the measure of, of a few arcs 
of our circle. The first one we're going to find is the measure of the arc that runs from P to S. Now since R in the middle is a central angle, that PRS angle is a central angle, then the measure of the arc that it intercepts is exactly the same thing as the measure of that central angle. So the measure of this arc that runs from P to S is 110 degrees. Now if we were to go the other way around, going from point P through point T and then hitting point S, so that would be a major arc, PTS, then what we have to do is we have to take 360 minus the measure of the central angle, so that ends up being a 250 degree arc. Now the last arc I want to find is the arc that goes from P to T. Now earlier I mentioned that PT was a diameter of a circle, and what a diameter does is it splits a circle exactly in half. Since a full circle is 360 degrees all the way around, then half of that, since PT is splitting this in half, would have to be a 180 degree arc. So that arc that runs from P to T, or even if we went the other way from P to S to T, that's a semicircle since its measure is exactly 180 degrees. The next thing I want to talk about are pieces being congruent when we're talking about circles. So let's say we're dealing with two circles. Two circles are going to be congruent if they're exactly the same size. Now how that's going to happen is if they have the same radius length. So let's say we've got a circle over here with a radius length of 2. And then let's say we've got another circle that also has a radius length of 2. Since those circles have exactly the same length radius, then those circles have to be congruent. They would be exactly the same size. Now arcs can also be congruent, but it needs to be a little bit more specialized. Two arcs are going to be congruent. Two arcs are going to be congruent if they have the same degree measure. and the circles themselves also have to be congruent. So we were, we're going to say that the radius has to be the same as well. So here we've got two different examples and we want to decide yes or no are the two arcs congruent. So in example A we've got this circle with a radius length of 7 and a central angle of 40 degrees. So this arc right here is a 40 degree arc since the central angle is 40 degrees and the radius length is 7. Now in the other picture we've also got a radius length of 7 and a central angle of 40 degrees so that means that this arc out here also has to be a 40 degree arc. Now what we said in order for arcs to be congruent is they have to have the same degree measure. These are both 40 degree arcs so that part works and they also have to have the same radius length. Both of our circles have a radius length of 7, so in example A, yes, these arcs are congruent. Now if we look at example B, here we've got a circle within another circle. We've got a 30 degree central angle that cuts this arc on our small circle and this arc on our big circle. Since this is a 30 degree central angle, the measure of this arc is 30 degrees, and the measure of this other arc is also 30 degrees because the central angle is 30 degrees. So the first part works. They've got the same degree measure. But do they have the same radius length? No, they don't. The circle on the inside has a lot shorter of a radius than the circle that's on the outside. These ones do not have the same radius length since we're dealing with different size circles. One big circle, one little circle. So no, these arcs are not congruent because our circles don't have that same radius length. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.